think uh, we all live in an uncertain world. That's a reality. And when we live in an uncertain world, and while we are having the responsibility of managing the money or in, a, in a fiduciary capacity, we have to evolve the structures and system which gives us guess, which gives us enough insight into the kind of risk which are on the horizon. So when I talk about the risk which are on the horizon, perhaps uh, what you have, there are risks which are in the near term, there are risks which are in the medium term, there are risks which are in the long term. Well, in the near term, the risk could be ensuring that the quality of the loan book should stay healthy and the bank should be in a position to navigate the interest rate risk well. Again, this is a function of the ecosystem. Do we have structures and tools available for hedging the interest rate risk? It differs from economies to economy. And at the same time, when it comes to the kind of competition which is also emerging, what is the kind of resilience of the banking system vis-a-vis -vis those players who are emerging on the, on the competitive landscape. But very important is for any bank and more so I think it holds good for a country like India, which is predominantly banking-led economy. The quality of assets is very important, which means that the underwriting principles and ability to ensure that uh, there should be effective control and oversight on ground. This is very, very critical. And in this context, perhaps, if at all, we can take example of India. The ecosystem has certainly evolved and that has helped in terms of profiling the customers better or at least validating the balance sheets even better. So I think this is something which is very positive and that is one of the reasons why perhaps we get to see much better balance sheets in the Indian banking system. But when it comes to the medium term risk, to my mind the risk which is looming large today, I would say the medium term, the other op very important risk is we all of us, all banks are dependent upon various vendors in terms of providing various services, in, including IT. The strength of any bank is the strength of each of these vendors, which very clearly means that, of course, banking system is subject to a very strong regulatory oversight, but all the players in the ecosystem are perhaps not subject to that kind of a oversight, re regulatory oversight. So it becomes very essential for the banks who are consuming these services to have some kind of an assurance function in terms of their resilience, their integrity. If at all there is any challenge on these two counts among the ecosystem players, the banking system becomes vulnerable. So this is the other near-term risk which I feel that uh, we as lenders, we have to keep in mind. And when it comes to the medium term risk, to my mind, that is the transitioning risk. We all have, all talk about the climate risk. You have also talked about it in an abundant measure. But I think to my mind, uh, where we stand today, we'll have to start thinking in terms of transitioning from the fossil fuel to alternate fuels. And in that process, one example I would give is that FGT, which we are insisting for various thermal power units, how to finance it, how to make it a acceptable proposition in the mind of the group of borrowers, because unless and until they get finance which is reasonably cheap, the adoption will be delayed which will lead to the delay in transition. And I think that we have got a challenge in terms of the time for transitioning. That is something which you have to keep in mind. 
and how do we ensure that we continue to have one buy in from the industry for transitioning and secondly we should have the sources of finance sources of funding which are cheap which could be with the help of various multilateral bodies but we all know that uh, climate finance and the transitioning finance there was a huge commitment made by the developed world but unfortunately they are unable to honor their commitment because of the situations obtaining in those countries in the current scenario so i think to that extent we'll have to probably dish out ways and means through which there could be some kind of a cheap source of funds available to that extent we also look at the regulators if at all they can give some relief when it comes to maintaining crr etc so that we can cut the cost of funds which we have or alternatively for such kind of financing can there be a lower rws this is the other thought which i, I have in mind and the last of course which is uh, the most important which should be not in the near term but yes in the medium term is the climate risk we have to deal with that in a because climate risk we have already started it see we have been seeing climate risk in agriculture but now it is getting much more pronounced and i think increasingly as we move forward the climate risk is going to be very very significant in the days to come and for that climate risk also then of course we have seen that you know the newer avenues which have emerged in terms of the renewable energy energy financing so these are the kind of avenues which have emerged but yes of, of uh, to ensure that there should be a greater adoption of these newer resources like the renewable energy evs batteries battery storage so i think it's a it's a highly complex because considering the fact that we we'll have to scale it up in no time and we have to have the base power also in the country uh any power plant thermal power takes at least 5 years we have not invested if at all industry starts growing at the kind of rate which you are expecting at about 8% i'm sure we will need solution asap in this particular context and that is perhaps one of the reasons why when it comes to uh, the ibc we have seen much better value coming for those stress thermal power plants that very clearly is a reflection of how the industry is uh, is perceiving the growth and the consumption of the fossil or this power which would be the base power though we are seeing rapid increase in the renewable power in the country and also adoption of ev in a very big way but i think uh, we probably need to step up uh, uh, on, on the pedal and uh, go for much faster adoption of renewable energy and also while we are doing that we have to keep in mind the transitioning uh, uh, processes also so that fgds kind of things should be adopted in a very big way so that emission should be reduced unless and until emissions are reduced we have a challenge so these are some of my thoughts initial thoughts